ranking all Rolex models. And if you disagree, you are wrong because my opinion is absolute and just. Anyways, first we have the... No, I'm just kidding, okay. Of course, be respectful in the comments. This is just an opinion. It's my opinion. People in the comments will say their opinion. Just be respectful. There's no need to be rude. Moving on. The Yachtmaster. Now, the Yachtmaster was introduced in 1992 as a luxury timepiece catering to the sailing enthusiast, featuring a distinct nautical design with a rotatable bezel. Now, I personally find this design very ugly and hurtful on the eyes. I think that they absolutely executed the dressy and sporty mix terribly. I think it's done really poorly. At this point, I just say get a sub. I don't really see why anyone would get a Yacht Master unless you own a yacht. And at that point, you don't really need to care about which Rolex you get because you can get them all. I just think it's generally a pretty bad option when comparing to Rolex other catalogues. And for that reason, it's the first watch going into the you know category. The Yacht Master 2, introduced in 2007, so very recent, is a testament to Rolex's dedication in the world of yachting featuring a regatta chronograph with a programmable countdown timer, tailored specifically for professional sailors. To get this one out of the way very quickly, again, it's hideous. This one is far, far too large for any average man to wear. And I think that, again, the Rolex catalog has much better offerings in this price range to fit the same things that you would buy this for. It's even worse than the Yachtmaster 1, thus it's going in the please discontinue category. The Rolex Submariner, launched in 1953, revolutionized dive watches with its waterproof case and rotating bezel, becoming an iconic symbol of underwater exploration. Notably, it's very famous for its appearance on the wrist of James Bond in several films. Okay, finally a good watch. Not only is this versatile, arguably the most noticeable and recognisable watch in the entire watch industry. I mean, everyone knows the Rolex Submariner. But it's also incredible value and it's a perfect daily. You can go swimming with it, you can walk with it, it's robust, it's got a very reliable movement. All in all, it's an incredible watch. Thus, it lands itself in the incredible tier. The Rolex Skydweller, introduced in 2012, so an even more recent one, features a dual time zone display and an annual calendar complication, catering to the needs of frequent travelers. Its unique ring command bezel facilitates adjustment of its functions, adding a practical touch, as well as having the caliber 9002, which is the most complicated movement Rolex has ever produced. For me, again, I'm sorry, it's ugly and it's far too big. And even though it is the most complicated watch Rolex has ever produced, which is actually quite cool and desirable, my eyes can't go away from the fact that it looks like an oversized rejected Datejust model it's just not very appealing to look at. So it will be going in the you know category. The Rolex Sea Dweller, first released in 1967, was designed specifically for professional deep sea diving, featuring a helium escape valve to withstand extreme underwater pressure. Notably, it was developed in collaboration with Comex, a French company specializing in deep sea diving operations. Now for this one, I'm not a fan, but I'm also not a hater. It is a nice watch, and if the Submariner didn't exist, I'd even maybe say it was a good one. But it's just an unnecessary Submariner. It's literally just a worse Submariner, because be realistic, unless you're an extremely professional diver, you have no need for this over a Submariner. It's just a slightly uglier version of a Submariner, so I don't really see the point in getting one. Thus, it lands in the you know category. Because it's just unnecessary. The Rolex Oyster Perpetual, introduced in 1931, marked a significant milestone as the world's first waterproof and self-winding wristwatch, pioneering the Oyster case and perpetual rotor technology. As well as this, its timeless design and simplicity have made it a cornerstone of the Rolex lineup, appealing to both watch aficionados and those seeking a versatile, everyday timepiece. Finally, another good Rolex. Not only is this Rolex extremely, extremely versatile, not only is it perfectly proportioned for any wrist, but it's simple perfection. Add on to the fact that it is like the cheapest Rolex, it's the most attainable, easiest to get your hands on, and the cheapest to get your hands on. 
I think that it is an incredible watch, landing it in the incredible tier. The Rolex Milgauss, launched in 1956, was designed for scientists and engineers working in environments with high magnetic fields. Featuring a Faraday cage to shield its movement, its distinctive lightning bolt seconds hand, and resistance to magnetic interference make it a unique and practical choice for professionals in specialised fields. Now I really want to like this watch, because it has a cool history, and in the days of the vintage, it was one of the only magnetic resistant watches available. But in today's world, every single watch has that, so it's not, there's not anything special about it. And on terms of Rolex's actual quality, it's on the lower side. It's more expensive than an Oyster Perpetual, but an Oyster Perpetual is better in every single way. So even though I do think it's a cool watch, I'm going to put it in the It's OK category. The Rolex GMT Master II, introduced in 1983, was developed in collaboration with Pan American Airways for their pilots. Featuring a dual time zone and distinctive red and blue Pepsi bezel, notably it's a favourite amongst globetrotters and aviation enthusiasts. Again, another incredible watch. Very, very nice and attractive to look at. Lots of different bezel and dial configurations, precious metals, steel, etc. It all looks very good on this watch. I think that it is an upgrade from the Submariner, as in you go from a Submariner to a GMT Master II, um, but I still personally prefer the Submariner. Either way, I think it's an incredible watch, thus it lands in the incredible tier. The Rolex Explorer II debuted in 1971. It was designed for cave explorers and adventurers, featuring a 24-hour bezel and distinctive orange GMT hand for distinguishing day and night in extreme conditions. Notably, it gains popularity among spelunkers and polar explorers. Now this is a good watch, and it isn't that ugly, it's relatively attractive and I see the appeal of it, but I'm going to have to put it in the it's okay category, because even though that's true, it's just a worse GMT Master II. There's not really anything it has on it. It's a slightly worse looking design. There's much less variety. There is more history behind it, but that doesn't change the fact that the GMT Master II is just the better watch. Thus, it lands in the It's OK category. The Rolex Explorer 1, introduced in 1953, was crafted to withstand the rigours of mountaineering expeditions featuring a highly legible dial and robust construction. Notably, it accompanied Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay on their historic ascent of Mount Everest in 1953. Now this watch is finally where we're getting into the good stuff. I think this is perfection. One of the best, if not the best daily wear. In my personal opinion, it's the best one watch collection out there. It's the Oyster Perpetual, but even better. I really don't think you can go wrong with it. It's affordable as well. It's on the cheaper side of Rolex, which is insane to me because it is just such an amazing piece with so much cool history. Literally being designed because someone climbed Mount Everest and they wanted it up on the top of there for marketing purposes because Hans Wildhoff was the best marketer ever. Due to all of this, it lands itself as the first in the classy category. The Rolex Deep Sea, unveiled in 2008, is built to withstand extreme depths. Featuring a helium escape valve and a ring lock system for unparalleled water resistance up to 3,900 meters, which is almost 4 kilometers. Notably, it was tested on the wrist of filmmaker James Cameron during his historic solo dive to the Mariana Trench. Now, I don't personally need to say much about this, it's literally just a more unnecessary sea dweller. There's not much to say about it, it's just the same watch but even slightly uglier and with even more unnecessary water resistance. There's just no point of getting this watch, just get a Submariner. The Rolex Daytona, launched in 1963, was initially designed for professional racing drivers, featuring a tachymeter bezel for measuring speeds and a chronograph function for precise timekeeping. Notably, it gained iconic status after being worn by actor and racing enthusiast Paul Newman. Now, do I really need to explain much about this? It's the Rolex Daytona. I mean, you can't really go wrong with this thing. It's the most recognisable chronograph in the entire watch industry with no questions asked. It's visually stunning and everything about it is just amazing. The only thing I will say is that at retail price, it's an incredible value watch, but in the grey market, 
it's not so great value anymore. And let's be honest, unless you have a lot of bucks to be spending on useless stuff you don't want, you're not getting your hands on one anyway. So that is a shame. But it will be the first watch on this tier list going into the Grail category. The Rolex Day Date, introduced in 1956, was the first watch to display both the day and date of the week, spelled out in full, earning it the nickname President for its popularity among world leaders and influential figures. Notably, it's crafted exclusively in precious metals and of course was worn by many presidents. Now this is a little bit biased because it is absolutely my favourite Rolex, especially, I know I wouldn't say we would include it, but especially those stone dial vintage ones, the 36mm, they are the perfect dress watches, maybe even the perfect watches in general, I don't think it gets any better than them, they are just incredible to me and even the modern ones of course they are more robust and such and they are better made i just don't like the dials quite as much but even so they are still absolutely absolutely incredible the best thing rolex offers in my opinion and absolutely a grail for anyone with taste the rolex datejust launched in 1945 was the world's first self-winding chronometer wristwatch to feature a date window notably it introduced the iconic cyclops lens over the date display enhancing legibility and becoming a hallmark feature of the datejust line now the datejust is another watch that i think is basically perfect especially the vintage five digits with the linen dials and such absolutely incredible incredible and gorgeous watches I think that the modern ones are also very good, especially in terms of value because they are really affordable. I mean, it's just the little brother of the day date, even though it is actually technically older, but the day date is just, come on, it's a day date. It's much nicer, much more classy. But this watch is just, it's a perfect dress watch. And it's also relatively versatile as well. People don't mention that. Since it can be made in steel, not just precious metals like the day date, it is actually more versatile. You can wear it more as a daily. You can wear it to a dinner out. You can just wear it to the beach. It's a very good all rounder. It's a gorgeous timepiece. And if you're getting into a Rolex, you either get a date just or an Oyster Perpetual. And either way, you're picking a good watch because both of them are incredible. But for my personal opinion, I think the date just is just slightly nicer putting it in the class category. The Rolex Air King introduced in the 1940s was designed as a tribute to Royal Air Force pilots during World War II, boasting precision and reliability for aviators. Now this has a really cool history, it's a great made watch, it's good value, but I am going to have to put it in the just it's okay tier. Reason being that it's just a slightly worse version of an Explorer 1 or an Oyster Perpetual. I think that the green is slightly less attractive than just having it more basic. And I think that overall it's a very nice watch, but there are just better options for the same sort of price range. So it's just okay. Last, we have the 1908. Please discontinue. Moving on, I don't really need to say anything about it. Look at it, it's horrible, it's way too big. It's just disgusting. Really, worst Rolex ever produced. I hope you enjoyed the video. Join my Discord and send me your own Rolex tier list because I'll be linking down in the description both the Discord and the tier list I used. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.